I'm going to show images of radiation necrosis. Radiation induces DNA damage, leading to inability of cells to divide and to cell death. Radiation necrosis occurs months to years after radiation, so the interval is longer than in pseudoprogression that we discussed before. And this is a 57-year-old patient who had been irradiated because of a nasopharyngeal carcinoma with radiation necrosis in his right temporal lobe. And radiation necrosis typically has irregular enhancement with a so-called Swiss cheese pattern where the holes in the cheese are the non-enhancing necrotic parts of tissue and it has also been described as a soap bubble appearance or a spreading wave front. In the case of a nasopharyngeal carcinoma, it's easy to detect that the changes in the brain are radiation necrosis, but if the primary tumor has been located in the brain, it might be more difficult. So you can use advanced imaging techniques to distinguish radiation necrosis from recurrent glial tumors. This is a study done in patients with high-grade glioma that had not been treated with bevacizumab because bevacizumab influences VEGF and VEGF plays a role in the pathogenesis of radiation necrosis. In radiation necrosis there is restricted diffusion in the necrotic part whereas in a high-grade Recurrent glioma, there is facilitated diffusion. Another thing you can do is perfusion imaging. So like in the pseudoprogression, if you have recurrent glioma, there is increased RCBV. And this is the case of a resected astrocytoma with enhancement along the border of the resection cavity with no increase in perfusion and no increase in RCBV, so this was radiation necrosis. If you look at the histology of radiation necrosis, there was a very nice study done in mice and initially there is cell swelling and vacuolization of cells and after a few months there is mainly vascular changes such as wall thickening, stenosis in the vessels, as you can see here, and the formation of thrombi in the vessels. The white matter is more radiosensitive than the gray matter and especially the oligodendrocytes are very radiosensitive and the damage to the oligodendrocytes by the radiation leads to demyelination and also endothelial cells are very vulnerable for radiotherapy and this leads to the increased vascular permeability and to the microangiopathy that you can see after radiotherapy and we're going to talk in more detail about the different microangiopathies in the next vlog. So I do 